Hello everyone, I thought I would do another Q&A. Um, this one I'm gonna be dyeing my hair during because sometimes you have to do two things at once in order for your life to be functional. <laughs> so if you wanna ask questions, you can leave them in the comments below and I will pick through them for the next video. First question is from Kyle who said, hey Alana, just wanted to ask if you have any updates on your head situation, how are you doing? Also, you're gonna hear my little foster dog in the background. I do not have it in me to be one of those people on YouTube who tells their dog to not have a good time just so they can make a video. I'm not a monster. What have you got? Nice toy, buddy. You're gonna hate the smell of this. This is bleach. Um, so yeah, I am doing better. Uh, I went to an urgent care and they tested me and they said, hey, uh, seems like a staph infection. Um, and that's exactly what I was worried about. I think I said that in the last video and everything is getting better now. I still have a wound up here that I have to, majority of the time, obviously can't do it while I'm dyeing my hair, which I wish I didn't have to do, but I do actually kind of have to at this point. I'm probably just not gonna dye this area um, because if you leave the brown any longer, it basically won't be able to go light. It's not, it won't get enough heat. I will just basically ruin the hair that took me like several years to get. So we're just gonna be real careful. Got a bunch of Vaseline. And when the glue came off, it also got a lot better. Um, what I'm doing now is uh, wetting a, a gauze pad with saline and leaving it on there and keeping it wet majority of the time during the day. And that seems to be helping with the healing process. I still have stitches in. As soon as the glue was gone, which um, they had given me a kind of a mix that had bleach in it to help the glue gently deteriorate. And it did work pretty fast. As soon as that was gone, things definitely got better but I think it's gonna be a pretty nasty scar. And the surgeon was like, you're probably gonna to wanna to get this scar surgically removed. And I was like, oh, really don't want another surgery. So I'm gonna not do that, probably. Maybe if I do decide to do that, it will be months and months and months away, years away even. I doubt it though. I just, I just want this to be over so bad. The idea of having another surgery on this part of my head, I don't care. Not the, the hairline can be a disaster. I can have a messed up scar. I don't care. I haven't had a migraine since. We're just, we're just gonna run with, with that and the infections are going to stop. So thankfully I'm very glad I went and got a second opinion um, and confirmed that it kind of was what I was worried about, staph infection. And because we caught it pretty quickly, it did go away. But yeah, I'm still a little bit sick and it does still hurt. If I show you, I probably won't in this video. It's still pretty red and irritated. It for sure still hurts, but nowhere near as bad as it did when the wind was actually open. So things are getting better. Hopefully I will have no more updates and that the next step will just be that my head is healed, hopefully. Thank you all for your concerns. It was definitely not folliculitis, which is what the surgeon thought it was, which I think I also just like didn't buy. From everything that I knew about folliculitis, that's a lot more like a, like a less aggressive acne. And it was a lot of very <laughs> gross pus. Um, it was definitely just a more extreme infection. So I think everything is getting better. No, so no, so what type of music do you listen to a lot? Everything from New Zealand. Um, I listen to a bit of everything. I think I probably said this in a million Q and A's, but my favorite genre of music is post-hardcore. It's a very specific genre. Big fan of post-hardcore, but I also like rap. I do like certain kinds of EDM. I like rock. I like hip hop occasionally. I actually like rap a lot more than hip hop, if you can uh, believe the distinction. But yeah, hardcore, post-hardcore are my, is my favorite genre. My favorite actual individual musical artist is Childish Gambino but my favorite bands are uh, Under Oath, Dance Gavin Dance. We Came As Romans, sort of like that genre, I don't remember. It's really like I just never left high school. I'm still listening to the same bands I listened to in high school. And I wonder if that's like, that's probably pretty common, right? That people just get stuck in their high school era. I, re I just realized that I forgot to put gloves on. How did I forget to put gloves on? I have gloves, where are they? Oh my God, I didn't wash my hands. <laughs> Someone said, I have zero idea who you are, but you seem really cool. For some reason you showed up in my recommended. The new channel is reaching like all different people. It's nuts. Are you like a Twitch streamer, a gamer, a model? Sounds like you do a podcast. <laughs> Hello, my friend. I'm Alana Pierce and I'm a video game writer. I feel like the way that I describe myself in my Twitch and Instagram bios is the best descriptor of who I am because I understand it can be a little bit confusing. I think if I did a Twitter poll, most people would say they thought I was a streamer, despite the fact that I stream pretty rarely in the grand scheme of things. I don't think I streamed even once in May. I didn't, I didn't stream at all. I'm trying to stream more often, I'm trying to. In any case, yes, I feel like my bios are the best way to uh, describe myself. I've made this so thick, Jesus. 
Um, I'm a video game writer by day. I work at Sony Santa Monica Studio writing a video game. And at night, I am a gaming content creator. And that is what I do. Steve said, hi, just wondering, is there no Idiots and Abroad this month? My friend Idiots and Abroad has been canceled. We have had um, a number of people be like, hey, is it gonna come back? And I do still intend to post content on Patreon. I need to reach out to Jacob about the Star Wars Celebration vlog. And I, I intend to keep making content with uh, at least two members of that group. But no, the show is definitely done. It just, it just can't exist anymore. It can't, it, it is not possible. We had a good year. I really enjoyed making it. I was very proud of it. Um, it was a really successful comedy podcast, which is like <sighs> such a bummer because do you have any idea how rare it is for a successful comedy podcast to be run by a woman as well? And to feature two people of color and we weren't doing it for money. It was just really fun. Um, it's a real bummer. It's a real shame. It is time to talk about keeps. If you didn't already know, Keeps is a subscription service that helps men keep their hair. There's no magic cure for baldness, but you can prevent hair loss from happening in the first place, and the earlier you take action, the more hair you'll keep. Of course, this is just if you want to. I feel like we are very shy to talk about men's insecurities. Certainly not suggesting you should be insecure about baldness, but if you are, Keeps can help. Step one is getting the FDA-approved, doctor-recommended plan that's right for you without ever leaving your couch. With Keeps, you can get quality expert care without ever visiting a doctor's office or pharmacy. All Keeps treatment plans are doctor recommended and delivered straight to your door at about half the cost of a traditional pharmacy. And all you really have to do is take some action, track your progress, and get support along the way. Keeps actually has a network of expert medical advisors, prescribers, and care specialists to support you in making your hair goals a reality. Each treatment plan comes with a full year of unlimited messaging so you can connect with your prescribing doctor about anything, anytime. And of course, the thing that I love about Keeps is that it is clinically proven. I have friends who use Keeps who've had wonderful results, which is why I'm so comfortable working with them. They're also just clearly very dedicated to helping support people with routines that work for them. Whether you're looking to prevent hair loss, stimulate hair growth, or just take better care of the hair you have, Keeps has you covered. Hair loss stops with Keeps. To get 50% off your first order, go to keeps.com slash Alana Pierce or click the link in the description. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash Alana Pierce. I love this question. A Mercedes asked, hey Alana, do you have an inner monologue? Um, I don't. I hadn't thought about this before you asked this question, uh, but no, I do not have an inner monologue. Um, I don't know how normal or abnormal that is. I imagine that's probably the more normal stance, but um, I don't really know how to express how my thoughts arrive, but it isn't voiced, that I don't, I don't speak to myself. It's just sort of concepts and ideas, I don't know. I will occasionally voice things if I'm thinking about, like if I'm rehearsing something, if I'm thinking about something I need to say to someone or, you know, like a PAX panel, I've done stand-up before. And for that, obviously I was uh, repeatedly speaking to myself when practicing my uh, five minutes. <laughs> Keo Plus, this is very relevant. You mentioned in a previous video that you have oily hair. I do as well, with my hair being about half the length of yours. I was wondering if you'd give a list of all the products slash shampoo that you use, as well as any tips for trying to keep my hair less oily. Um, so my shampoo is not going to help you whatsoever. That's it. Any shampoo does the exact same stuff to my hair. The reason that I bleach my hair and always want to, which is what I'm doing right now, ladies and gentlemen, this is bleach, is because my hair is extremely oily and um, bleaching it basically like dries it out, takes the oils out, they, your hair just ends up absorbing the oils. So step one, bleach your hair. Otherwise I just use a lot of dry shampoo. Um, I'm in a kind of unique position where my hair is extremely oily, like so oily that it ruins my skin. I think I said that, but I also try not to wash my hair very often because it's bleached, which is how it's so long and still healthy is because I'm very careful with it because of the bleach. So in between washes, um, I just use a lot of dry shampoo. And I've swapped brands like a million times and they all work out just fine. So just dry shampoo. You can also use talcum powder if you don't want to use dry shampoo or like baby powder. It will all have pretty much the same effect. Um, but I only condition the ends of my hair, not the top of my head, because I feel like that contributes to the oil. So I shampoo the top of my head and I condition the ends. Thanks for asking. It's so relevant to this video. Wow, look at us go. Reggie Rooster asks, we'd love to know what books you recommend reading that have affected your life in an impactful way. I don't know that I've read any books that have affected my life in an impactful way because I don't tend to draw a lot of inspiration from fiction. Um, like there are books that have made me cry when the series ended because I was very attached to the characters, but I don't know that I had a, like a lasting impact. 
maybe like something like Aragon did or Harry Potter did just because of I was a teenager when reading them, but I don't feel like that advice translates to now. The the thing that I think about the most, the, the, the piece of fiction that I found the most inspirational, I brought it up on podcast before, is a short story, very short. You could all read it in about two minutes. And it's called, I believe the title is Those Who Walk Away From Omelis or The Ones Who Walk Away From Omelis. And um, I just think about it all the time. It is a I'm not going to tell you what it's about. You'll, you'll take the meaning from it however you please. But uh, it had a lasting impact on me and then I just, I reflect on it frequently and I do try to consider some of the themes in that when approaching how I live my life. But I don't know that uh, I could tell you exactly how you should take it. Frankly, I think if I did, some people might not read it. So <laughs> just go read it. Two minutes. Really, really easy. You'll find it very easily. It's an easy read and it's free. You can just find a PDF of it online or whatever. Check it out. The next question is from Amy and it says, hey Alana, congrats on Forbes 30 under 30. <laughs> Thank you. I was just wondering if you could tell people a little bit about the application process. Um, I did not apply, but my manager did. So that's usually how these awards work, right? That's even how the Oscars work. It's how Academy Awards work. It's how all of it works. And anyone who pretends that that isn't how their thing worked, like they didn't, like someone didn't choose to campaign for an individual is lying. My manager applied. So I don't know about the application process because I did not submit myself. Um, but you basically asked me a bunch of questions. <laughs> uh, I don't really know what, what that was. Um, or like, I, I, he had to answer most of the questions, right? They had to be like, I assume questions that are like, who is this person? What do they do? Why do they deserve to be in Forbes 30 under 30? Which is of course a huge honor. Um, it was something that my parents understood and that's what made it special. It was like, of the awards that I've been nominated for or won, they're all stuff that my parents don't understand, like the game awards. It doesn't mean anything to adults. <laughs> but yeah, the only part that I got was uh, just at one point, my manager just said, hey, Alana, just some interview questions. And I don't even think he told me it was Forbes. Um, I, he tried to keep the whole thing a surprise. And when it happened, I texted him. I was like, did you know that this was gonna happen? And he was like, yeah, you were like guaranteed. He was like, we knew from the start that you would get it. Um, but he kind of kept it a secret for me. So I did not know. He just sent me these like interview questions that was stuff like, who is my inspiration in the industry? To which I answered Amy Hennig. And that was most of my involvement. I found out in a kind of unfortunate way. I'm uh, definitely not trying to throw any shade here because um, I understand how this happened. But I found out, I didn't even know what date it would go live, right? I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know. I found out because a friend who also applied texted me and was like, oh, wow, I guess they can only pick one of us. Uh, congrats. Um, which was like a little bit of a downer way to find out. Um, she was actually being really supportive and kind, but it still was like, oh, because if I had like looked at Twitter first, I try not to look at social media before 3 p.m. generally. I do some days, but I try not to most of the time. Then I would have like found like, oh my God, congratulations, Alana, and like all this positivity, but I instead kind of got it under a guys of somebody else's disappointment, which was um, yeah, a bit of a bummer, but it's not the end of the world, who cares really? It doesn't actually mean anything. No, uh, definitely full respect to people who do, but like, I'm not one of the people who's gonna put it in my bio. I don't know, I just don't, I don't feel like it, it means enough, I, well, who cares? The dog keeps trying to sniff it and I wanna be like, dude, you trust me, you don't want this. You don't want anything to do with any of this. Literal bleach. It's got, it, it can't appeal to you. There's just no way. There's just no way. Thank you for watching, everybody. I'm Alana. Thanks for hanging out on the new channel. I appreciate it. Thanks for letting me make, you know, weird and different content. <laughs> Never, nobody on the gaming channel ever would have uh, stuck through this weird shit. <laughs> and a very big thanks, as always, to Keeps for sponsoring. If you bleach your hair, probably use Keeps can really make your hair fall out. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.